Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. That is right, we are back with another EV. Today we're taking a look at the Tesla Model 3 standard range. So we're looking at the affordable car in the Tesla lineup. Now, unfortunately, that means we do not have dual electric motors, so this will be rear wheel drive. It's not gonna be as powerful and performance oriented, but that's okay because it's affordable. And if you're looking for an electric car that's not a crossover at around $40,000, there's really not much to choose. Uh, you have maybe the Chevrolet Bolt or the Hyundai Ioniq, but that's really it. But when you have Tesla with the Model 3, you have a car that's efficient, that's practical, affordable, and really it's a car that you're gonna wanna own and drive. Now, if you are debating where to take the leap and go from gas power to electric motors, then I think you're gonna wanna watch this video because even though this is the standard range, I personally believe that at around forty to forty-five thousand dollars, this sedan right here is most certainly worth the price. So in this video, we're going to take a good long look at the Tesla Model 3, take it out for a test drive, and see why. If you're looking at buying your first ever EV and you don't really care about the performance you'll get with a long range, or you don't really want to spend fifty thousand dollars, then maybe buying a Tesla Model 3 standard range might be a great decision. Now before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Tesla store in Peabody, Massachusetts, located right outside of the North Shore Mall, for allowing me to this review and let me take the Tesla Model 3 for a few hours out on the road and to fully experience this EV. So if you are local to the Boston area, make sure the Tesla store in Peabody is the place you go to purchase and order your new Tesla. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Tesla has been at the forefront of many technological advancements and breakthroughs in the automotive industry over the last handful of years. But one of their overlooked achievements has to be getting Americans back into a sedan. First it started with the Model S, which drew a lot of attention to the brand and got the ball rolling, as Tesla set its eyes on competing with legacy manufacturers. When the Model 3 arrived, not only would it be the most affordable vehicle in the lineup, but it would be unrivaled in the EV market, as so far there was no one coming close to offering the performance, range, and pricing that Tesla has with this compact sedan. Despite a growing number of consumers buying crossovers, there's still a market for cars, and if you're looking for one that's also an EV, the Model 3 is without question at the top of your list of considerations. Starting off with pricing, the Tesla Model 3 standard range comes in at $37,490. And just like with the Model Y we featured recently, you can opt for the $10,000 full self-driving capability package. When talking about the price tag, Tesla no longer qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credits, which could play a role in the buying decision for some consumers. However, unlike the Model Y, the Model 3 has very little competition in this segment, while also being affordable and practical enough to take on the Chevrolet Bolt and Hyundai Ioniq. From a driving standpoint, one of the key differences between the standard and long range will be the center of gravity, as the standard range still gives you a sense of being planted to the road, but as we'll discuss later on, you feel the weight and power coming from the rear, with this Tesla only being powered by a single electric motor. Getting to dimensions, the Model 3 is actually similar in size to the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, and Mercedes-Benz C-Class, but can easily be cross-shopped with smaller entry-level luxury sedans due to pricing for the standard range. While consumers are pretty reluctant to buy anything besides a crossover, the Model 3 retains some form of practicality thanks to the decent-sized frunk that provides additional storage, where maybe you'd store a backpack or a few bags of groceries. It's the added storage compartments and overall cargo capacity that gives this car an advantage over gas-powered sedans, and is why, theoretically, you don't necessarily need a Model Y or EV crossover as your daily driver, unless you have a family and need better utility. Despite having a minimalistic exterior design, the Model 3 is one of the better-looking EVs in its price range, as it's futuristic, but not so over-the-top where you may draw unwanted attention. Of course, you won't have the same styling cues as most cars of this size that are gas-powered, as there's no front grille, but you will have an air intake for the lower portion of the front bumper. Standard will be LED headlights for better illumination at night, 
while also giving this compact sedan a more upscale appearance. Taking a quick glance at the side profile, the Model 3 has a sleek silhouette for a more streamlined design. The model for this video is sitting on 18 inch aero wheels, but you can opt for 19s for an additional $1,500. Making our way to the back, Tesla's signature sportback rear fascia gives this sedan a sporty and modern look, as the C pillars flow into the final third of the Model 3's road presence. Just like up front, you'll have LED taillights, and overall, despite its simplistic design, this sedan certainly catches your eye when it passes you by on the highway. For performance, the standard range is powered by a single electric motor to give you 283 horsepower and 307 pound-feet of torque, and a 0-60 to time of right around 5.3 seconds, which is still pretty impressive for a base trim. Since this model doesn't have dual electric motors, the standard range will be rear-wheel drive, but for consumers living in colder regions of the US, choosing the long range gives you all-wheel drive, better performance, and obviously more range on a full electric charge. Where the standard range may turn off buyers is how far you can go when fully charged, as Tesla estimates 263 miles of range. But if you're looking at purchasing an affordable EV and you have a shorter commute, the Model 3 standard range offers more than enough. Stepping inside, you're good by an identical interior to the Model Y we recently featured, with an all-vegan interior, which to be quite honest is pretty comfortable. These seats are heated and power adjustable for both the driver and passenger, and provide a good amount of support for longer drives. If it's your first time inside a Tesla, you'll notice there's not many buttons besides the door handle and the two buttons found on the steering wheel, which will be used to adjust the steering wheel and side mirror positions, among other functions. Since you don't have a digital display, all the features and information you're looking for can be found on this massive 15-inch touchscreen. From here, you can access your navigation system, dual zone climate control, drive modes, windshield wipers, exterior lighting, front release latch, power tailgate, and you can watch YouTube videos and even play video games. Since our time with the Model 3 was a bit short, we couldn't go over everything. But without question, this is the most in-depth user interface on the market today. However, sadly, there is no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto compatibility. To help parking your Model 3, you'll have a variety of camera angles to choose from to make sure you don't get yourself into trouble when navigating your way through tight spots. Below, you'll have a wireless phone charging pad, and working your way down towards the center console, you'll find plenty of storage compartments that can easily fit smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic sunroof, which makes the interior seem more open and spacious for all occupants inside. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off on the passenger side, and this seat is adjusted further back, it's also somewhat on a recline, and I have a decent amount of leg to work with here. Now of course, I think the Tesla Model Y has more room, and it's a slightly bigger vehicle, so I think that if you're looking for a more family-oriented uh, electric vehicle, going with a Model Y would make more sense. Now, for someone at my height around 5'5", I have a decent amount of leg to work with here, so I think if you had kids back here, they're going to be just fine. But there is one thing I want to point out here with EVs, even sedans, that really makes these cars uh, most certainly worth the price. So for the center seat, because the floor is flat, there's no center hump, you could definitely fit a third person back here on a shorter drive. But you don't really get this in most compact cars because you will have that center hump. So it does take away from legroom. However, I have plenty of legroom here. Also, what they've done with Tesla is that they, they've given you the ability to kind of extend your legs to a certain degree. Now, the only issue that I think you're going to have here if you had average size adults is that shoulder room is going to be the problem. Because I think if you had three kids, it's going to be just fine. But for uh, people around maybe 5'8", five, 5'9", five, I don't think this is going to happen at all. I think it would just still be a vehicle for two people in the back. But when it comes to headroom in the center seat, I still have a few inches of headroom to work with here. So if you had people around my height, I think they're going to be just fine. And then, of course, on the driver's side, I adjusted this seat to someone of my height around 5'5", five, five, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. So that's one of the reasons why I think EVs have a bright future. Uh, of course, they're going to be the future uh, within the next 10 to 15 years, but it's because these cars are definitely practical. Uh, I think for 
a car, like say like a BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, or Mercedes-Benz C-Class, it, it might have a little less room when it comes to leg room, I think even headroom. So definitely keep that in mind. If you're looking for a great all-around car at around $40,000, $45,000 that's efficient, practical, but also you can sit people in the second row, then I think the Model 3 is definitely the way to go. Also back here, you will get two rear air vents to go along with two USB-C inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside you're gonna find right around 15 cubic feet of rear cargo space, which is right in line with most vehicles of this size. Now do keep in mind that this is not as practical as the Model Y, so if you are looking for something that you'll be able to take on road trips, I think the Model Y is better suited for that. However, I was able to fit all my camera gear back here, but it was becoming a bit of a squeeze, so I would have had to lower the second row seats for additional storage. But one thing I really like about EVs is that beneath the floor mat, you will have another compartment where you can fit another bag of luggage, you can fit groceries, you can fit quite a lot in here. So even though it says 15 cubic feet of room, take, in, take into consideration that in a gas-powered vehicle, you won't have this compartment. So I think the Tesla Model 3 is most certainly more practical and of course efficient than most sedans in this price range and segment. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. All right, so let's take the Tesla Model 3 out for a test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, and how it compares to the Tesla Model Y. Now, this is the standard range, so you don't get as much power. It's only rear-wheel drive. But I do think that for a daily driver during the spring and summer, this could definitely work up here in New England. And of course, I think if you are living in colder regions of the country, you're probably going with a crossover or something a little more rugged. So I think this would still um, fare very well with many consumers up here in the Northeast. So let's take this out. Let's have some fun and let's see if this is a viable option compared to other um, luxury vehicles on the market today, because I think you could compare this to a three series Audi A4 and of course the Mercedes-Benz C300. So for the drive mode today I have it in sport acceleration is in standard and uh, when it comes to stopping mode we have that in roll I don't want the regenerative braking kicking in as strong as it did in the Tesla Model Y it may have taken away from my experience with the vehicle so I want to just kind of get more of that natural feeling uh, and something similar to what I've experienced in other EVs the weirdest thing though driving a rear wheel drive electric car is that you actually feel the power coming from the rear so in the tesla model y that i reviewed a week ago uh, it had all wheel drive and you could really feel that power but this time i feel all the weight in the back even just going straight not even cornering i can feel it and it's really a, a cool sensation see it tells you when the light turns green okay pal i'm really impressed with your 335i the really weird thing is that everyone wants to race you in this car. It's like, I have a standard model, I have a st standard range, this is not gonna happen, but still zero to 60 right around 5.2 seconds. I would have taken that 335i, but that's not why we are driving this car. So let's get on the highway, see how it handles. It's just so smooth. It's really smooth. The only thing that it does take away from with it being rear wheel drive is that it doesn't feel as planted to the road. So the rear end, it, you feel it, and in the front end, you start feeling that body roll. Uh, I think I would definitely go with the long range if I wanted to have some form of performance. Of course, that's around 4.2 seconds, zero to 60, so I would enjoy that. Uh, but I think if you're just looking for a good EV, around $40,000, $42,000, this would be uh, more than adequate. I just love the instant torque. That's what I love about these EVs. They're just really enjoyable to drive. And that's one thing that I was a bit concerned of getting in uh, behind the wheel be, uh, of my first EV was that would I want the computers to take over? Would I want uh, the autonomous technology to just drive me around? And I have to say, even, even though there's no sound, even though there's no transition of the gears, maybe I'm just somebody who loves driving. I prefer being behind the wheel, uh, being in control of all at all times, and it's fun. I like I like driving these cars around. 
And one thing I really like about Tesla's design is the fact that the A pillars are not that aggressive at all. So I have a nice panoramic view to work with in front of me. And then of course, with the infotainment system, you have the ability to see what's around you. So you know if there's a car in your blind spot, you don't really need to check in mirrors as much, although I'd still recommend doing that. But you have this really nice and secure and safe feeling being behind the wheel. And that's what I really like about Tesla is that they really focus on the technology aspect that makes you feel secure and safe when you're driving. Now, personally, I do believe that the standard range would be more popular among people who live in warmer climates like Florida and California. But I do think, though, that if you want to feel that sense of being planted to the road and being, feeling connected to the road, you're going to want to go with the long range because the dual electric motors really put you at a lower center of gravity. So you feel like you're in a sports car. You feel that weight to the car. And I know some people would say, well, you don't really want to have a heavy car. But when it comes to electric vehicles, it definitely adds that sensation of being one with the road and you feel very connected to the car as well. And that's why I think that I would pay the extra money and go with a long range over the standard range. But then of course, when you think about it, when it comes to the economical aspect, I mean, you you have a car that's efficient with a range right around 260 miles, but also you don't need to worry about gassing up. You're paying around $40,000. And really, when you look at other EVs on the market, you're buying what? Maybe a, a Chevrolet Bolt. So there's really not much out there to compete with the Tesla Model 3. And I think that even if you were to go rear wheel drive, uh, this is still a great vehicle all around if you live in New England. All right, so since there is a semi there, I want to get an idea of what acceleration is going to be like. So let's do this right now. <laughs> the thing is though with Tesla's is that with the accelerations you get pushed back in your seat which I did not feel in the Mustang Mach-E so Tesla even with the standard range you definitely had that sensation that propulsion uh, it's not as violent as aggressive as if you had the dual electric motors but still very fun so since this is an EV, we have to revisit the range anxiety. And of course, people are going to say, well, it only has around 260 miles of range. Is this going to be enough for me? And I think if you were to buy a Tesla, say a Model 3, you're gonna to wanna to go with the long range because of course you're gonna have right around 350 miles to work with. So if you commute a lot, if you go on road trips a lot, then the long range is gonna be the way to go. However, if you live in the city, say you live in Boston, for instance, and your commutes are very short, we're talking maybe 10, 15 miles one way, then I think it could definitely work because with Tesla, they have a better infrastructure in place with their supercharging network. And when you compare that to other brands right now, they don't have that infrastructure in place. And that's something I have experienced already with Ford that you're gonna wanna charge at home. Where Tesla, you at least have that peace of mind knowing that if you are gonna go on a longer trip, you can just go to a Tesla charging station and you're gonna be just fine. You can charge up and then get back on the road and be back on your journeys and travels. So I think Tesla, even today, even when you start looking at other competitors, and right now the Model 3 is unrivaled for at least the foreseeable, foreseeable future, you're gonna to wanna to go with uh, Tesla for sure out of the EVs, even if you are a fan of legacy brands. Tesla just has you covered and I think you have that, that sense of feeling that, all right, if I am gonna go on a long trip, Tesla has that infrastructure in place where I'm gonna be just fine. Now getting to interior quality, I have to be honest, it feels just like the long range Model Y. But one thing I wanna point out here with this infotainment system that you can actually access the camera angles while you're driving. I did not uh, have that ability with the Mustang Mach-E. So you can check out your blind spots. You can see what's behind you. I think it just adds a really cool safety net. I think it makes you feel like you're in a very safe vehicle. And of course, if you do want to get around, say like even in this situation where I'm behind, uh, you know, some traffic at this red light and I want to maybe go right instead of left, I can see what's coming uh, on my right and then safely get over to the right lane. That's actually really cool. I wish more brands would do that. I know Honda has something similar to that, but you just can't access the camera angles while you're driving. This is actually a really ingenious uh, feature to work with here. What I think really stands out to me after this test drive with the standard range is that you're still getting a really good vehicle for the price. We're talking right around, you know, $40,000, $45,000, and you're getting a vehicle that's efficient, it's affordable, 
also unrivaled you're not going to find another ev in this price range that's like this but also it definitely gives you that uh that entry level luxury feel as well this could definitely be very comparable with say a bmw 3 series audi a4 or mercedes benz c-class and i think if you're looking for something that's efficient that you don't need to go to the gas station anymore and just a nice daily driver then the standard range is more than enough so at the end of the day I believe the Tesla Model 3 is a great all-around EV. Now, of course, I think a lot of people would go with the Tesla Model Y just because of the extra practicality. And I think even for the Model 3 as a journalist and as a consumer, I would go with the long range, not only for the better efficiency, but also improved performance. However, if you are on a strict budget around $40,000, $45,000, and you're looking for something that's efficient and something that you can drive on a daily basis during the spring and summer months up here in New England, then I think uh, the Tesla Model 3 standard range is more than enough because when you look at 260 miles of range, that's right in line with most EVs that are hitting the market today in 2021. But also from a practicality standpoint, you have 15 cubic feet of room and then an additional storage compartment beneath the floor mat and the front. So even though we look at sedans as being not the most practical cars and they're being phased out for crossovers, uh, Tesla has given us a car where you could drive this on a daily basis, go on road trips with it, and also have a family. And you just don't really have that with gas-powered sedans. Because I think that if you have maybe like a BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, or Mercedes-Benz C-Class, uh, probably that's best if you don't have kids. But I think the Tesla Model 3, you could get away with that, especially if they're smaller. So I think that when you're looking at an EV around $40,000, the Tesla Model 3 is most certainly unrivaled because when you look at other competitors, such as the Chevrolet Bolt, I don't look at that car as being uh, very enjoyable, but also inspiring to own. And then also the Hyundai Ioniq. I just think that the Tesla Model 3 is the perfect balance, especially at that price. So I would definitely recommend taking the Model 3 out for a test drive, even if it's a standard range, although I still think you should go for the long range, pay the extra money because you're going to get a lot more for that price, such as with the range and performance. But anyway, even if you're looking uh, for an EV that's more affordable, the Tesla Model 3 standard range is most certainly enough for sure. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.